Hi everyone, welcome to World Makers, and I'm here with Rob Barnett from My Damn Channel. I have to say it again, My Damn Channel. We've worked with so many brands uh, and clients over the years. That's such a cool name. One of the things I learned before you came here is that Time Magazine voted My Damn Channel as one of the 50 best websites for 2011, which is pretty amazing. Plus, when you told me you started in 2007, you know, in the world of technology, that's, you know, that's hundreds of years ago. <laughs> so how have you been able to maintain that momentum? Because I think that's one of the biggest challenges in this space. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I, I think that some of it is counterintuitive, perhaps. You go to a, a, a typical website, and everybody seems like they're trying to play the big game. Everybody that's uploading video has thousands or millions of videos there. And let's face it, YouTube won that game. So when we started, we said, you know what, we're not going to compete with anybody to be the biggest. So maybe we should focus our effort and our energy on the content itself. And in the great tradition of uh, companies like HBO or Showtime, maybe only focus on a few things at a time. Um, we also made a decision at the beginning that unlike a lot of other sites that say, hey, name talent, upload your video here for the honor mm. of being on our site. Mm. We didn't believe that that was a just way to start a business, so we pay our mm. talent. Um, you know, we, we believe that the talent not only needs that creative freedom, but in realistic online dollars 2012 mm. or even day mm. one 2007 when we started, we felt like we had to make sure as business owners that there was enough money to both pay mm. the talent and then do something mm. very counterintuitive mm. on the web market, mm. like television right. and like film, because I think if you just upload a video, kind of close your eyes and wish that it's going to get mm. views, mm. there's just too much out there mm. to do that. So we market. What you're doing is what every advertiser would like to do, which is not only the integration, but doing it in, a, in an original way, which is easier said than done. So when you think about competition out there, I mean, who are, the, are there other, uh, other websites or other content providers that you think are operating? as successful as you are in this space that you'd be concerned about? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the competition is fierce. I mean, when we started our company in 2007, it was only, uh, what, about a year after Google mm -hmm. purchased YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we realized when that moment happened, there was going to be somewhat of a gold mm -hmm. rush, right? And everybody was mm -hmm. going to either try and out YouTube YouTube, and there were a lot of companies that tried that, mm -hmm. or like us, a number of others went out with either a studio model with distribution only, without their own destination, mm. or in our case, a few did do studio, destination, and distribution. So we've always believed that you kind of have to hit on all of those fronts in order to make the most revenue. Uh, but I think the big difference between my damn channel from 07 to 2012 and a lot of these big competitors is that we were warned, especially by my partner, my business partner, don't raise too much, don't spend too much, and don't pocket this sort of big, frothy internet money until we really had a lot of these clients like Subway and Fiat mm -hmm. proving the business model. So you've got other companies out there, let's say Funny or Die or College Humor, uh, certainly on the comedy front, that have a tremendous amount more backing mm -hmm. than we do. But we have uh, a lot of successful business cases that have come out of the last few years and with less capital we're really proud of the way we've been able to mm -hmm. compete with some of those those deep pocketed uh, friends out mm -hmm. there. Uh, one other question I had is when I think about what you've done over the last four years and during those four years social obviously is increased in popularity you look at Facebook and so on has that been a big influence in some way shape or form with either your development slate or how you think about the development of content with social in mind? It's essential. I mean, you can't breathe without it, and there's no question that uh, videos cannot be discovered simply on one destination site. You've got to be smart enough to get those videos everywhere they can go, and then as a business owner, you've got to be smart enough to get them anywhere that they can make money. Mm. So this is an art and a dance and a science that requires people. We've decided to really add staff to that. And yes, you're absolutely right. I think you have to, certainly in online, think about the creation of the content, not as just little TV, but as content that has 
online thinking in its DNA. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest breakouts we ever had is a, a, a very fun named show called You Suck at Photoshop. <laughs> I and remember I, that. <laughs> I, I, I would inspire anybody to go look right. at that now because that's a show that really speaks to this audience in a way that's completely counter to the old world right. and in a way that's completely social mm -hmm. because it's targeting a specific audience and allowing them to not just share the content but get involved mm. with it. And that, I think, is the magic that you know only strikes every once in a while. Well, Rob, this is terrific. Uh, you've got a lot to be proud of with my damn channel, and I think it's a testimonial to the power of instinct <laughs> over uh, corporate research. Again, uh, and thanks for making the time to be on our show, and thank you for joining us on World Makers. Mm -hmm.